Having a little bit of extra fuel in your four wheel drive can be a really nice feature. One, it means you can go further out there into the outback, but it also means you can stay longer in the bush as well. So today in this video, we're gonna take you through the process and the thinking behind fitting a long range fuel tank combined with a water tank to our 105 series Land Cruiser. Here at Mad Map Full Drive, I'm all about educating and building the four wheel drive community so we can wheel well. I'd love it if you'd hit that subscribe button and then hit the bell so you can get those notifications as well. So in the interest of disclosure, Long Ranger is providing us with a fuel tank and the fitting of that. And in exchange for that, we're providing them with some promotional content for their brand and for what they do. So we've got a petrol powered 1FZ FE Toyota Land Cruiser. It loves to drink fuel. And one of the challenges we have is that with its standard tanks, we had a range of about 600 kilometers. That was nowhere near enough. So with this additional tank, we're going to get a range of around about a thousand kilometers, or that's what I envisage anyway. So let's head on over where I tell you a little bit about the tank that's going in our vehicle, how it gets fitted, what it's made of, what it does, and how it all works. Now obviously Long Ranger do their systems to suit the different vehicles, diesel, petrol, Toyota, Nissan, whatever it be. But this is obviously going into my 105 series, petrol, Land Cruiser, so that's what this tank is all about. So for our application, we wanted to have the water tank incorporated into the petrol tank and that's what this one is you can get just a petrol only tank if you want depends on how you use the vehicle so big picture 122 liters of petrol and 55 or thereabouts liters of water the petrol tank is made of two millimeter aluminized or aluminiumized steel and so that's strong and co corrosion resistant which is great this is made of a 304 1.6 millimeter stainless steel and the way these two tanks get grafted together is they use a polyurethane bonding glue to glue this tank into this tank that's going to allow for the differences in thermal um, expansion rates of the two dif dissimilar materials. It's also going to help stop any corrosion and whatever. And basically that whole in between of those tanks is completely sealed. So mud, grime, whatever can't get in and corrode anything or cause issues in between where those tanks come together. But they still have that little bit of flexibility and movement which they need for expansion. They also need for corrugations, rough roads, all that sort of thing. So. That's the big picture of it. Now down in here, we've got our sender and uh, fillers on that side. We've got breathers for the water tank, or that's the fill port for the water tank. This is the outlets for the water tank. You can have a gravity feed. My system's going to have a pressure pump uh, supply as well. This is a breather for the water tank. There's breathers and stuff for the fuel tank. Now what they do is they use the sender and the fuel pickups from the original Toyota tank into here. So the other thing to mention, the long ranger tanks are all built to Australian standards. Part of that is they need to have a method of managing the vapors and fuel emissions coming off the petrol in the tank. So the vapors come in, they get captured by the granulated charcoal, and then the vapors come out and get burnt through the motor. So Long Ranger, I believe, are the only company that are making this style of accessory that go to the expense and effort of incorporating a compliant charcoal or, or fuel emission system by having that charcoal canister tapped into your existing systems. So now we're going to go and get this into the vehicle and then we'll go and fill her up and see how much petrol we really do put in there. So the Long Ranger tank goes where the original sub tank was mounted and the original spare tire. So as part of this, you have to have a, a spare wheel relocation solution. So for me, it's putting it on the rear bar on this wheel carrier here. Now the sub tank can fit in place and we get the space for that extra fuel and water capacity. Now, once all of that was installed, we then went down to the petrol station and we filled it up. Now, I was kind of expecting, you know, they rated it 122 litres. I was thinking, yeah, it'll be a bit less or a bit more than that. 
it was exactly 122 litres of fuel went in there. So it's certainly advertised as is on the box, you know what I'm saying? So that was a very pleasant surprise. Now I have noticed with using the tank a little bit that the weight of that fuel and water does mean that the back of the vehicle sags and rises and falls. In total, we're between empty and full there's about 170 kilograms of weight difference that's quite a quite a bit it's it's basically two of me you know sitting on the back of the vehicle being added and subtracted as that water and that fuel gets used so it's certainly a consideration that you need to have when you install these long ranger tanks is that ability to carry the weight and you also need to consider the GVM of your vehicle, the gross vehicle mass of your vehicle, and how that weight is going to affect that. Now what I've done with this vehicle is I installed a set of heavier duty coil springs in the rear of the vehicle to accommodate that weight. Now there's a couple of things about this system that I'm not totally happy with and I've had to have a discussion around the solution. So we'll get to those things in a minute. Let's just talk about the function of the tank. Is it achieving the result that we needed it to achieve? Absolutely. I can get, if I was absolutely pushed for it, I could get a thousand kilometers of range out of my vehicle now, assuming I was driving carefully and we weren't doing any off-road work. On our recent family holiday, we went into the Victorian high country where a lot of that driving was low range, mountainous country, crawling through fire trails and, and, and tracks and stuff like that. And having the long range tank in the back and then the 90 litre main tank up front meant that I didn't have to worry about my fuel usage. In its standard trim, this vehicle was in the space where you managed your fuel usage and made sure you knew that I could get from here to, and get to there to get the next fuel. That was no longer a concern and that's why I wanted to install this tank into the vehicle. Because as, as we all know, and I do make a bit of a joke about it, but these are a thirsty vehicle. Put it in an off-road environment, it can be very thirsty. And so you need that capacity. That's where the diesel engines really do come into their own. They are a very economical vehicle and if you're going into remote areas, the diesel range with a long range tank in it would be phenomenal. I think I'd be confident in saying some of the Toyota diesel engines could give you a range of about 1500 kilometers or so. That's a phenomenal range. But I'm very happy with the capacity I've got now and the range I've got now. I recently did a trip where I was towing with the, the towing the race car on a car trailer. We're going down the road at 100 kilometers an hour. I was returning about 26 liters per hundred, which is quite a nice economy number for me with that sort of load. And it meant that I was able to do about 750 kilometers out of the fuel I had in the tanks in the vehicle. So I've found it to be a superb addition for the way I'm using my four wheel drive. Now, if you're enjoying this content, hit that like button down there and uh, hit the subscribe button as well. So let's talk about the water tank. Well, it's absolutely fantastic having that 55 liters of water under the vehicle in a tank. And it just, oh, I love the peace of mind of having that water supply there. The way it's installed, we've got a pressure pump mounted near the tank under the vehicle, and we've got a switch up on the dash that turns that on and off. And then on the rear bar, I've mounted up a tap so that you can just turn it on and off and water flows. Works an absolute treat. I love that solution for getting the water out of the tank. I wouldn't have a gravity feed system myself. So the next thing was one of the challenges we came up with, and we've spoken to Long Ranger about this challenge problem and they say that what they're doing now is the best they've come up with and they've tried a number of different solutions and I want your input I want you guys to help me and help Long Ranger understand maybe there's some better ways we can solve this problem so throw it in the comments down below help us out the problem is this the breather line comes from the water tank up over the fuel filler nozzle which is about or neck about this height over that and then drops down behind the rear mud flap. What happens is when you go around a right hand turn, the water slosh forces itself out of that hose down onto the road. And obviously wasting water is a just no, I, I no, I can't do that. And the vehicles behind me said at times they thought we were dumping 
considerable amount of water. Like, and I'm like, I've got 55 litres of water. The last thing I need to do is dump that on the road. So I have to find a solution for this and I don't know what it's going to be. So that's why we want your input. I'm thinking at the moment, my first idea is to see if I can get that fuel uh, water breather line to run further up this part of the vehicle, up into this area here. And maybe that will be a solution. I don't know. I'm going to have to work it out though. That leads us to the next area that was a little bit of a challenge and we need to resolve as well. And that is the, the water tank doesn't have any means of measuring how much water is left in the tank. And in my previous vehicle, the way I had it set up was I had a, basically a sight glass on the side of the tank. You could visually see how much water was left and ma start managing your water usage accordingly. That worked great. Well, with this system, you obviously can't see the water tank it's buried up underneath the vehicle. So we need a different solution. Now, what I've come up with is, is this solution. I don't know if it's going to be the right solution, but it's one of these little units. It's a digital flow meter. It cost me about a hundred and something dollars on eBay. And what I'm going to do is mount this little sensor, or it's just a little propeller basically, and a pulse generator down in the water line coming from the water pump. And then this little gauge I'll mount probably up here on the cargo barrier somewhere so I can see how much water we've used. And the way it works is when you turn the, the pump on, water will flow through here and it'll generate a, a pulse which you then calculates and says you've used this much water, therefore you've got this much water left. That's all well and good. I do have a reservation about this solution and that is it has a minimum flow requirement and I think it's a little over a, a litre per minute. Now when you're using the water, sometimes you only have the tap cracked a tiny bit and so I think if it works it's going to be an indicative solution rather than an accurate solution. So that's why I'm going to try and tackle this initially. It, I don't know. I'd love your input. I'd love your thoughts on how we can solve these two challenges. And what I would say to you is have these two challenges in mind when you look at the long ranger uh, water tank, fuel tank solution and, and decide whether it's a problem for you and if it is, how you can manage it. There is a solution. I know I can, I can solve this. I just got to work it out. And when I do, I'll let you know. Has fitting the long range tank and the water tank been worthwhile for me and the way I use my four wheel drive. Absolutely it has been. I totally, totally love having that range. I love having water on board. It's absolutely worth the effort and the time invested in getting a solution like that installed in my vehicle. So however you're using your vehicle, if you're going into the out country, the outback, the remote areas of wherever you live in the world, consider getting a solution like this installed into your four-wheel drive so you can get out there safely and have a fantastic time. I'm Mad Matt, stay safe on the trails.